Welcome to Factorio Masterclass. My name is Nilaus and this is the series of tutorials and guides here on YouTube covering all aspects of the game and aims to provide insights and resources to help you improve and become a better engineer. Today's episode will follow up on the green circuit build I did last time by going more into detail with the red circuits. Like green circuits before, then red circuits is something that you also need more and more and more of in the base. And this is particularly the case because red circuits is producing so damn slowly. What I'm going to do here is make a simple build that can be upgraded into several stages as the game progresses. I have deliberately excluded the fully beaconed moduled build because that's something that doesn't really fit in this progression. The fully moduled and beacon build is something I'm going to cover in another masterclass with very late game mega base builds. Let's dive in and take a look at how red circuits can be upgraded throughout the game. Each episode starts as a workshop streamed live on my Twitch channel. This is over at twitch.tv slash Nilos and you're welcome to drop by. I am usually conducting these workshops on Mondays at 8 p.m. Central European time. Feel free to drop by and you can help decide, design and discuss upcoming guides. The designs we make together are always improvements to what I've built myself previously. If you like this kind of video tutorial and want to see more, then hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. You're also welcome to share ideas and feedbacks and comments in the comment section below or join our Discord where we discuss all the games we play here on the channel. Let's move on to the red circuits or advanced circuits as they are actually called. The principle here is that we have prepared some blueprints, some designs. I'm going to walk through them, demonstrate how they work and highlight the intricacies of these. And they're all made to scale up to the later game. The main challenge of red circuits is actually their crafting speed. They are extremely slow. So when I build a unit such as this one, then you can consider whether you want to build multiple of these. I would not recommend extending it because everything here is designed very much to ratio. Now let's hook it up and then I'll explain what's going on. Similar to our previous build, we have the combinators indicating what should be on each row. We have this one indicating how much it is. These are important to say that these are rounded numbers, but they are very small numbers. That's the key point here. It's only like three, three, uh, three advanced circuits per second, which is very, very low. Let's walk through this because there are some kinks and quirks to this build that I'd like to uh, emphasize. First of all, this is a really interesting way of splitting it. So what happens here is that I get the green circuits in on one belt and plastic in on the other belt. And then I put them in here and then half of it goes this way and the other half goes this way. So one half goes in and the other one goes under. And that means we have, as you can see here and here, we have two lanes of plastic and green circuits. That means if I continue this for as long as it would do, it would actually consume these two evenly because they're here. And it, since it's two half belts and they're pulling out from each side of the half belt, then it would actually easily consume the full belt. So everything here is built at ratio. You can see that there are spaces here. These are for future beacons. So we put them in immediately. It means that you're going to use more red belts for this build. But if you don't bother with it right now, just drag the line through and then you can re redo it when you build beacons later on. I just did it like this because then we're ready for it. One thing to note is how far I've actually moved the assemblers back from the main line so that the long inserters can only barely reach the middle tier here and that one needs to go out otherwise it there we go that's now it's going out each one of these is producing two copper cables per craft and that's two crafts per second so it's each of these is producing four per second that's going to be 16 per second and then we also buy by the crafting speed 12 per second 12 per second which actually corresponds to exactly 24 assemblers they can be used and they will go in here on these belts. The interesting thing is that I am I'm using the same belt you can see here. I'm getting the copper in. It's splitting at this location and then I have a, a an orphan underground belt. The orphan underground belt is used to only take the right hand side of the belt while the other part goes up here and then only the left hand side of the belt. That means the draw from this belt is even. It's not like it's only consuming from one side. It's actually consuming evenly from both sides. Very important little trick. And what happens here is that it goes in, but I'm using the same half belt and the outer belt is now used for transporting 
the wires further down the line. That's why I've put these in here. I put some a splitter that's filtered so that we do not have the copper leaking down the line here. There's no need for it to go down the line, so let's not have it. So as you can see, there are really some quirks with it. There's this way of doing it. There's the distance from the main belts. There's this utilization of this additional belt. So I'm, I'm really proud of sort of the, the intricacies in this design we did on our factorial workshop. However, the core of the matter is it's not really using much. What you can do is you can simply say, well, you know what? I like it, but I want more. Just stamp, stamp, stamp. How may, depending on what your design is, you can put more in, but that's really up to you how, how you want to do that. We're going to look at it from a single one. And then if you want to make more, knock yourself out. As you can see, it's really not consuming very much. Now let's do the second upgrade. So what you will experience as you transition and start using the red circuits is that you will just not have enough and you will be desperate to get some more value out of it. So even before you have all of the yellow assemblers, Mark III assemblers and blue belts, well, let's look at the, the way that it can be upgraded. At this point, you really want to upgrade this. So we need to make sure that we can go for the upgrade and I want to throw in a few beacons here. So this is basically a middle upgrade. It's not the full thing, but it's, it's kind of get some beacons, get it in there. Let's get some upgrades going. Since we're talking beacons, we're talking production science and with production science, that also means yellow assemblers, Mark III assemblers, and also blue belts. So the first thing we want to do is upgrade to blue belts and Mark III assemblers. That is done right here. Maybe something you've noticed is that I have undergrounds at the end. Technically, you wouldn't need undergrounds at the end if this is the end, but this is not the end. Let's have a look at our, this is the existing blueprint. Now it's all red because yeah, they are red belts and now we can upgrade. So this is the next tier. What you can see is beacons are being added, but that's not it. You can also see that additional assemblers are added to the very end of the line. So let's stamp it down. And what you can then also see is that. And here I am going to take, we have the same issue that these cannot be manually inserted themselves there. So what we are building now is a slight upgrade. We are using Mark one speed modules. We're using Mark one productivity modules. This is something that I find myself doing this upgrade often, but I don't make it as nice as as it's displayed here. The reason I'm doing this is because when you unlock blue belts, you unlock. By the way, you don't really need blue belts for this. I just upgrade because this is the tier available. Nothing about this is moving so fast that it needs blue belts. You can see that here. See only this is the fastest moving and it's only 19 on two half blue belts. So when you've unlocked Assemblers Mark III, my recommendation is put it in here. You want these crafting faster. When you unlock the beacons, this is one of the first places you want to do it. But at this point, you most likely do not have the red circuits in to build modules Mark III. So this is sort of a middle tier. And yeah, I would uh, I'd recommend it. Let's have a look at what it does. It upgrades not a lot, but it's still, up it's still an upgrade and it's still worth it. You and now you're outputting five per second at the expense of using eight copper, nine plastic, nine circuits. So really stay very, very low. You can upgrade it as you like or build multiple of these if you like. Uh, but there is one more upgrade available to this. Before we dive into the final part and the final upgrade of this build, I would like to take a moment to thank all the Patreon supporters who make it possible for me to make videos like this. Without the support from Patreon, I would not be able to keep this as my full-time job and I would not have the time to make the videos like this. So thank you very much for supporting. And if you want to support the work I do, then pledging on Patreon is a great way to support. Thank you very much. Now this is the final tier upgrade we uh, we need to do here. And if you this, this basically means that we are upgrading the modules to the best modules there is. However, it's not quite as simple as that. The first thing, however, we want to do is upgrade all of our all of our modules to the faster, to the higher tier. Done like that. Now, the next thing we want to keep an eye on is this won't be able to keep up. You can see that it's stockpiling here inside the copper cables. So what we do need 
is we need actually to make sure that the outbound here are upgraded to the faster ones. And you can see down the line it's moving. Then we also need to do the next upgrade. This is the next upgrade. What you can see is it adds now four more, uh, eight more assemblers to the end of the line, which is pretty good. But there's one more thing to keep note of. If you look at the second assembler for copper wire. Now they've actually been changed to, instead of having four productivity modules, they have three productivity modules and a speed module. That is actually necessary. So we have to do make that change manually. Remember it. Otherwise, you're simply not making enough circuits to reach all the way to the end and keep these flowing. Now, this is as big as you can make it, both in terms of the space we have available. You can, of course, double it. Let's look at the actual numbers here. What we're seeing here is it's now producing 15 circuits per second. It's consuming 21 green circuits, 21 plastic. And this one is actually the most interesting because 42 copper wire is consumed. Well, 42 copper wire is actually, if you look at this, it's very close to a full blue belt and I have two half blue belts. So I can't overdo this. This is actually slightly overproducing, but it should be, it, it should be. There you have it. This one is producing 15 per second. It's the fact that it's producing, it's 15.4. The fact that it's 15 is actually quite handy because it means you can build three of these builds if you can afford it in terms of modules. And if you have three of these builds, then you have a full blue belt of red circuits. So you can see this is, I mean, it's it's a good upgrade and all, but it's, you still have the problem that it, everything is so slow with this build. Alternative is to make more beacons on the outside here to make, to use fewer, fewer assemblers and more beacons. That's also an option. You can experiment with that yourself. I like this one. It's a nice straight line. It upgrades continuously. So that's why I've selected this design. And that's the final build that I'm presenting uh, for red circuits. And that concludes the red circuit build. I hope you have enjoyed it and I hope you will find it useful in your own base to have this kind of upgradable blueprint. As always, the blueprint is available in a link in the description below. If I still have your attention after this walkthrough, then I hope you have enjoyed it and also maybe learned a thing to apply to your own bases. So how about hitting the like button, subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, and sharing the video with other people who might find it useful. If you want more factory content, then head on over to Twitch. The address is twitch.tv slash Nilaus. I'm streaming most days. I'm streaming Factorio on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays evenings at 8 p.m. Central European time. And I hope to see you there. Feel free to drop by. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, stay effective.